<laughs> We're setting up the scene, Aaron, for those yeah. listening. Uh, Aaron Chica, where, where? <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I can watch with that with a straight face. Hold on. Well, keep in mind that obviously, if you cuss every day and an f bomb is like a comma, <laughs> you come a bit desensitized. We were puddle jumping because I can't call ducks, right? I mean, <laughs> hey duck, that's about as good as it gets. So we were puddle jumping. Yeah, there ain't a lot of talking coming from me. I just like, mm-hmm, okay, right? Uh-huh. Let me right. write that down. That's sort but of that- the more of the redneck way to me. Like yeah. ambush hunting is like the pro way. Like you <laughs> yeah. throw out decoys and you know r- rednecks run from water hole to water hole. There was there was a guy that came up to me. He's like, "Why is everybody shooting trad bows nowadays? <laughs> is, is it the next skinny jeans?" You know, I'm like, "Well," it- <laughs> and Matt was probably more surprised than I was because I know how good I am. But um, <laughs> no, no, he was just like, "Man, so like you're Harvard, natural." Harvard's in humility, right? Exactly. <laughs> a lot of that. No, he's like, he's like, there. he's like. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And recurves aren't for everybody. I tell everybody that, you know, you should try one. But if but if you don't like it, don't let it ruin your, your the hobby and passion oh, of yeah. bow hunting. Don't yeah. like, like, for me, uh, I don't feel any peer pressure. I mean, Aaron doesn't give me any crap at all, but other people do. Right. Like you do. <laughs> um, we talked to a guy. He's like, yeah, I lost 26 arrows. Like, 26 arrows? <laughs> Sean DeGray is my hero. Isn't he, though? This thing is, this total archer challenge is epic. It's on a... I mean, just this the place undertaking. Is this is not a rodeo. This is the one and only TBO. Of yeah. this, organizing this kind of event is unreal. I'd lose my freaking mind yeah. if I had to set this up. and. Dude, it's like he thrives on it. Oh, he, he does. does. Like he kills it, though. Let's bring out the top. It's what makes him tick and what makes him happy. Even though which, he looks pissed off. Which seems really <laughs> weird. It right? does. Like, like, I don't know how to... Well, here's the crazy thing about Sean is... Sean's been doing this for like six or seven years, however long it is since right. he... Bit your time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, since, since he purchased it from the guys that started Bowcast at the Bird. Yep. And what's crazy is Sean has not shot one target... In the seven years that he's ran it, he's never ran one course, shot one practice target. He is so dedicated to making sure that everyone has the ultimate experience while they're here that uh, he doesn't even worry about all the fun that he's missing out on. He's having fun. Oh, he's having a blast. Tell. Yeah, he's he's having fun. That sort of fun would drive me into the ground. <laughs> yeah, I'd lose my mind. But once you get to know Sean, you realize, oh yeah, you're you like weird oh, yeah. fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're into that. <laughs> you're into you're that. You're the guy that's into that, for sure. <laughs> so, uh, Casey, why don't you introduce the podcast? Hey, well, welcome to the Greedy Bowman Podcast. You're here with Casey Harbertson and Matt Davis of Mountain Ops, and your host, Brian the Freaking Man Call. <laughs> and we are where? We are at the Big Sky Resort in Big Sky, Montana, at the Total Archery Challenge. And it has been one heck of a week, and they've had almost a thousand archers run through here since we've been here. And today is the last day, and uh, you've got anything from four or five year old kids that have come up to do it to yep. out uh, eighty seven year old guys. We've yeah. seen, yeah, yeah, uh, people from Chicago. There was an old dude up on the mountain with us yesterday, cranking away, dude, no flinging joke. arrows, just I, getting it, <laughs> yeah, by himself. It's I'm it's. Like, it's awesome because the 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 range from what they've set up is literally like we said five to to, to, to Dude, ninety. He had like fourteen arrows, like more than a dozen, and <laughs> he'd come up on the target and he'd shoot and it just <laughs> blow up in the trees and he'd just pull out another one, <laughs> <laughs> shoot again, let her eat. He, he didn't like the, there was a shoulder shot. He pull out another one. In the meantime, I've got my whole posse, like right. twelve children, like no, my three three daughters and my wife behind me. So we're we're slow. So he had plenty of time to like fire away, but you're not I, slow because of your children, though. It's slow because of <laughs> you, right? <laughs> it's a little combo. <laughs> but he seriously shot about. I think I just watched him blow up about six arrows. <laughs> six of the fourteen. Yeah, six of the fourteen. He's just having a blast. 
He's probably so, shooting aluminum 2117s. Yeah, people, I think, <laughs> Hadn't I think, evolved to carbon yeah. yet. <laughs> I think people, they seriously, though, they come up here and you see them walk. They, they come up here with tons of arrow with, with the intention of just letting them fly. They yeah, do. For yeah, fun. I don't care. For fun. It, you, you know, know, it's interesting. You, you see the first timers, and they're the guys that they've got the four arrow quiver, and you're like, oh, shoot. <laughs> Those are the guys you see walking down the course halfway yeah. to go pick a, well, to come down to the bottom to get more arrows. And we were talking about it yesterday. You know, you see so many people that will come up here, and all they want to do is lose every single arrow. We talked to a guy. He's like, yeah, I lost 26 arrows. I'm like, 26 <laughs> arrows? I'm trying to do the math there. I'm like, well, it's about $140 for a dozen arrows. You're 280 he, bones. 280 in the, yeah, bones. in, in the He's ground. got a connection. Must. He, He's on pro staff. There are, <laughs> pro, staff <laughs> pro staff for Miss Team. Yeah. There, I was going to say, there's, there's a lot of people out there with more money than me. I figured that out over the last couple of years. Yeah, I found that too. I got you a lot more bold. money. You and me both. Yeah, no, but you come, you come here, and for anybody that ever comes to the Total Archer Challenge, don't come with four, don't come with six, come with a dozen or two of, uh, of your finest carbon arrows that you, can, that you can get or the best deal you can find. Because in all honesty, there are some pretty awesome shots that they set up. So oh, you're going to sure. blow, blow something up. And uh, you want to be able to have a, a pack full, a quiver full, that you can make it through all the courses and, and just have a good time in it. It's awesome. But uh, it, it's funny to see the people that come back next year. Yeah. And they've got a backpack full of arrows. <laughs> Dude, it's really cool because, you know, some, the first shot on the kids-like course, the locals like this, the easier course, that's the air, that's the, the course first I shot uh, has like one million trees blocking. And you're supposed oh to yeah, the cat, it. and it's like yeah. this yeah. wide. Your right? window's like this big. I was like, there are mm. arrows in trees all over. I'm like, that's the first shot on the kid <laughs> steal. <laughs> that's supposed to build the confidence for the rest of no, the round. No, seriously exactly. though, just thinking about it, and I've been practicing, you know, that surprise release. You know, just I got a new release, and I just don't know when it's going to go off. Just pull, 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 I pull, real, pull, yeah. pull, pull, pull. Yeah. And as I as I keep pulling. It goes off. It was awful close to them trees. <laughs> <laughs> awful close. Fletchings may have hit bark. I, pref- I you know, I, I've been used to pulling the trigger, you know, uh, which brings up a, so we're going to talk about traditional bows since we got Matt, uh, Trad Life Davis here. Yo. Uh, and and uh, we're going to talk about that. I, I just went to Joel Turner's, uh, like, uh, shooting seminar. Yeah. And, uh. Or, or clinic, or whatever you want to call it. So we go down there, and I watch him shoot, and he's a phenomenal shot. Like, Absolutely, he shot like a, 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 a. I mean, he shot better than than compound shooters shoot at long at every distance, whatever the target range at a three D course. Heart shot over and over, oh, yeah. over and over. The guy is a machine. I I've never seen someone shoot a traditional bow like that. Aaron's good. This guy is crazy good. Yeah, super accurate. So uh, we we got to talking, and and at, what he was really teaching at this camp was, you know, uh, mental the between the ears. Yep, mental discipline, uh, controlling, <clears throat> you know, your shot, the controlled shot, using your mind, using concentration rather than just sort of going through, uh, you know, what he calls an open loop system where you just draw and shoot kind of automatically, mm-hmm. which you don't think is automatic, but it. It really is. It is. It becomes a habit, and you can do the same thing over and over. And how you know when you're when you're when you're at full draw, and and if you're not doing if you're not really concentrating on that surprise shot, and and for for some people who, who don't who don't know who haven't been shooting for a long time, haven't shot a rifle or a handgun, mm-hmm. uh, the idea for the most accurate shot in, is is to be able to have it. The shot go off when you don't know it's anticipate. Go off. You don't want to anticipate it. You don't want to whether it's a rifle or a handgun or a bow. You don't want to flinch. You don't want to squeeze a trigger or anything like that because, especially at long distances, those little mistakes add up mm-hmm. and it magnifies them. I mean, you can be at twenty yards and yeah, you can have a bad release and you might be able to shoot a pretty decent group. But where Joel's able to shoot out, you know, seventy, eighty yards accurately with the with the recurve. I mean, the guy's got it going on. He's he's got that system down. And, and that was, uh, <clears throat> and for a while now, I've thought, yeah, this is this is a surprise for me. Like I'm, but really, I was bracing for the shot. <laughs> Didn't realize how much input I was putting into. You're thinking that shot. about it. Yeah, and when I re- pull that trigger, I'm like slowly squeezing it. But I'm so familiar with my release, <laughs> I know when it's going to go off. The muscle memory. It's like it's like oh yeah, it's, it's t- about to go. Yeah, and uh, 
so it, it's been interesting to 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 try and um, just let that thing be a surprise. Mm-hmm. And with a traditional bow, where you got these fingers and you're like letting go, it's like how does that become a surprise? Like with a mechanical release, obviously, you know the mechanical release can be set in a way that you just like a hinge release or something where you're you're you just don't know for sure mm-hmm. when it might release. You how do you do that with a trad bow? How do you get that surprise release? Um, the surprise release. So what I do personally, and some people aren't a big fan of it, but I've you know developed how I shoot through using it is by using a clicker, and basically what that is, it's it's a draw check in and of itself. And I've actually got my bow right here. I'll reach back and grab it. So if you're watching it on video, I can kind of explain what that is. So this piece right here is a clicker. So it has a blade that will lift up, and I've really padded mine up so that I'm able to actually hunt with it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But basically. This rope, once I get to my anchor and start expanding, because you, ne- you never want to stop pulling, right? You don't want to be collapsing on a shot. Yep. You want that elbow to be pushing back. And as soon as I... C- it's more of a feeling for me than a noise. Most clickers, it's, it's a noise. Like the Olympic archers, that's what they use. Mm-hmm. As soon as I feel that little... It's a little pop, that's when I release. I've trained myself to have a subconscious, just poof, my hand comes off. So I can shoot at just about any distance accurately... I just I come to full draw, anchor, and keep pulling, and that's kind of that trainer. But without one, it's it's extremely important to you know just never stop pulling. So many times, you see people anchor, and then they kind of just start collapsing. You can't ever lose that back tension. It, it's the same thing from a compound to a recurve. You have to have that back tension and just never stop pulling. Your elbow needs to go back. Your hand needs to come back, and. It's just something that you kind of develop, and you have to practice it. It's just like shooting a gun. You have to practice the squeeze. You have to practice that shot and just train yourself to have that release. Well, we're up here, uh, you know, on the mountain, and, and, and you can feel there's this wind, right? Right. It's, it's strong. Yep, moving the tent. And <laughs> uh, I'm up there, and it gets worse up there toward the top, and yeah. there's all these targets up there, and I'm shooting a 40-yard shot, and I'm standing in the wind, and it's just it's just hammering me. Yep. And I'm trying to put that pin, you know, right on the target, and just stick it there, and then be and then just slowly keep pulling through until that release goes off. I don't know when. The problem with that is the wind is hitting me so hard that right. I can't afford to be surprised when it goes off. Right. So in that case, I'm actually kind of pulling the trigger. Right. It's sort of like when an elk walks through a window, I think, and, you know, you, you just got to time it. You, yep. can't, you can't be. That's your window of opportunity, and you got to be able to send it when you need to send it. So it's easy to start making that excuse through the whole course. Though, <laughs> right. right? I'm, I'm just practicing killing <laughs> stuff. The wind's yeah. blowing. I'm just going to pull the trigger. Right. No, absolutely. <laughs> well, and I think that's what's fun about this is it's. It is real life scenarios. Yeah. I mean, especially as you run the different types of courses, it, it helps you to see, you know, it's not always going to be a bull standing in an open meadow with no brush clearing. I mean, a lot of these shots, it, it's a bedded bull with a three foot uh, pine in front of it, and all you can see is eight inches of the vitals, and you got to sneak it in between that vitals and that little, or that that pine and that little bit of brush. Right. right. And so that's that's another thing that's cool. And then you're you've got the angles you've got to compensate for if you're shooting with your uh, if you're shooting with your compound you've got to watch your bubble on this mountain. If you if you don't trust your bubble, you're done. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then you have the wind. You have the angle. I mean, it's just everything you got to kind of factor in just exactly. just like you're hunting. And and uh, that's that's one of the reasons why this can really get you set up and prepped for oh next for month. Sure. You know, I was talking to the old guy. And he's like, he's like, this is the first time I've ever, I've ever been at one of these, like having fun. He's like, oh yeah, this is awesome. And uh, I was like, okay, so what's your first impression? And he's like, well, this is exactly like what hunting's like for me, and I'm not hitting the target. So <laughs> he's like, this so is what you're saying. very eye opening. <laughs> he's like, I'm at home and I'm shooting targets and I'm a good shot. I come up here on the mountain and I'm missing stuff. At those same distances. He's like, this is really humbling. It is. And uh, I found that, too. It's like I get done with the course, and if I didn't lose an arrow, you know, I hit foam on everything. It's like, hey, that's pretty imp- – I, I should be I, – I'm kind of happy, although I probably shouldn't be because right. like, every shot should be, like, in the lungs or the heart. Right. Uh, but I'm like – it's so easy to walk away from this with, you know, half your arrow has gone. 
Yeah. So oh yeah. Just walking away with uh, getting it done. It's just different. It's different than shooting at a tar- at a you know at a at a flat target this big. You know, there's a whole mental game when you're trying to thread it through trees or over rocks or through bushes and just like a real scenario. Yep. Yeah. And what's cool is, well, what's funny is uh, the first day we were here on Friday, we shot the locals course, which is shots basically 50 and in. And so we're thinking, okay, that's going to be a great course to start out on. I lost six arrows. How many did you lose? I broke two and lost one. Okay. So and I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> so it, we were just like, what's going on? Like, mind you, we're both shooting trad, but even the compound guys we were with were having troubles. I mean, we're just like, man, what is going on here? Um, next day we go and we, we shoot uh, the mountain ops course, which is further distances, basically 70 and in, but a lot more obstacles as far as yep. those weird shots, kind of trick shots in, in, a, in some sense. I didn't lose one arrow. How many did you lose? None. None. And so it, it's it's a day to day thing too on yeah. how well you shoot. Sort of like a round of golf, right? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, oh, for sure. Yeah. I, would you think that's more more so even when you're shooting trad than compound, or is that just a misconception? Mm. I would say it's both because here's the thing. Jordan yesterday um, he brought his compound and he lost like five arrows. Yeah. Where the day before, I think he had lost two with a stick bow, and Jordan sucks with a stick bow. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait till he listens to this. <laughs> no, he doesn't, he doesn't suck, but he just hasn't been shooting it as much, so he's not as confident. He's really put his time behind the compound. But he lost quite a few arrows, and you could see the frustration in him. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. we're hitting foam at, at 70 with our stick bows, and, and he shot over the back and blew his arrow up with so, a compound. So, so I've seen some guys shoot trad that are very effective. Uh, there's this this you know idea that that uh trad shooter tra- shooting traditional is difficult and and uh you can't ever achieve high levels of accuracy right um <clears throat> but i've seen some guys do it uh and now are they just abnormal what's your take on this matter are they just freaks or or can everybody do that i think everybody's fully capable just like anybody's capable of shooting a compound accurately you can shoot a recurve just as well and i think that was the biggest thing for me mm-hmm. that that sucked me into traditional archery the first time i ever shot one i was out on the mountain with a with a friend and we ran into one of his friends and his friend was a traditional archer. His name's jeff Vess, and he's one of my best friends now i shoot with him a couple times a week but anyways he handed me his bow and he's like well shoot that bush right there i'm like It's like five feet away. He's like, who are you, Robin Hood? I'm like, okay, my my bad, dude. So anyway, I draw back, and I just, he's like, just pick a leaf on there and shoot it. And so I drew back, and of course, I can't even hardly draw his bow back. So I'm like this, but I shoot, and I hit that leaf. I'm like, okay, that was cool. I want to try that again. I did it again, and then I started shooting bushes that were further away. I'm like, dude, this is like throwing a baseball. Yeah. And so it went from shooting five feet to, well, I want to shoot. 90 yards. I want to shoot 100 yards. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to figure out how to do that. And so you just spend time behind the string and, and you figure out a system that works well for you. And, and man, it, you are 100% able to shoot accurately at great distances if you know your equipment. I mean, like I know my point on is 50 yards. I can walk around this course and if there's a target at 50 yards, I will put my point on it and I will smash it. And, and I can attest to that because I saw it yesterday, <laughs> <laughs> which, which was cool because it, uh, yesterday was the first time that Matt and I were really able to shoot together and just totally focus on kind of that gap shooting and, and figuring your point on. So yesterday I was able to find out that my point on, because my arrows are a little bit longer than Matt's, um, is 60 yards. Yeah. And so when I found anything basically 55 to 60, if I put that point on, Boom! It was it was. You hit, hit that panther in the twelve ring at sixty yards. I mean, it was boom donut. I mean, as long as as long as my shot execution was right. perfect, right. it was it was there. And so, if for any reason my shot execution wasn't there, maybe I was left to right, maybe pluck the string a little bit. I'd take another arrow, perfectly execute that shot, and boom, point on, hit it. And what was cool about that was, you know, it, anybody that thinks that you can't shoot far with a traditional bow. I, I think that just proved that you can. Now, I was talking to Snyder <clears throat> not too long ago. We were on our bear hunt, and he's like, if any trad bow shooter, you know, most of them, if, if they try to tell you you're going to be as accurate with a trad bow as you are with a compound, he goes, they're lying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, there, there, there's no doubt because, like Casey said, there, I, 
it, it's when you're shooting a recurve, it's all you. It's there's it's it's not a compound. The bow's not going to repeat itself every time. So, like Casey said, if he has perfect form, if he has a good release, a strong bow arm, his head tilts the same, the bow's canted the same, then he's going to hit it. But there's a, in my opinion, there's a lot more variables that play into that, and it's all riding on you. It's yeah. not the bow; it's you. Yeah, right, right, right. One hundred percent. Yep. Right. Yeah, I, I think of it like uh, so. Um, you know, a guy with a golf swing. If he can repeat that swing over and over and over again, then, and he hits that ball the same, then then he, the results are the same. The, they're good. Yeah, they're good he, results. he becomes one of the best golfers in the world. Yep. But if you're one of the guys that you know, you know, sometimes you're on, sometimes you're off, then then yeah, that that similar thing happens with with uh, traditional. Yep. What I think is cool about traditional, though, for me in my mind, because I'm probably I'm just not that focused on detail sometimes or that repeatable deal, right? Like, right. you know, I, I, I'm working on it. We'll see where it goes, this whole trad right. bow thing. But uh, uh, what I've realized is with a traditional bow, all I got to do is get to 30 yards. Yeah. And because I've been such a crappy shot with a compound, I've been doing that my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, whatever, right? If I can, right. anybody can shoot 30 yards efficiently and under – with a, with a trap bow. In fact, I found it is almost as easy as as a compound. Yeah. Just, it's it's like, you just drill, get that sucker dialed it's, in. It's and, instinctive, yeah, right? It's, it's, like, like, it's, like it's like throwing, throwing a baseball. A baseball. Yeah. It's like, it's pretty simple. So, I, I kind of like that idea. Uh, so, how is trad life treating you? Super good, man. It's <laughs> I'm shooting really, really good and playing around with a couple different bows. Um, South Cox was kind enough to send me one of his, it's the Jackal. Um, I've got a big stick from Bob Smith out in Iowa. That's a great shooting longbow. That's actually the first longbow I've ever shot, simply because longbows usually aren't as forgiving. Yeah. But man, it's 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 a great bow. So still shoot my Hoyt Buffalo. Love that bow as well. But just playing around with a couple different things, just because I'm kind of able to do that now where yeah. I'm at, and really enjoying spreading my traditional wings, if you will. But I'm shooting really good, and just hoping for another great year. Killed two turkeys this year so far killed one at 35 and one at four yards so i think i'm accurate from there to there and <laughs> that, that's one thing i was gonna say uh by the way casey i'm gonna give you a task okay you're gonna ask him a round of questions in, okay. in a couple of minutes okay so be thinking of those questions okay that have to do with what traditional hunting oh so we're gonna keep it on topic yes topic? okay, yes. okay. Or you can also, you can also not throw in, go off on crazy you tangents. can also throw in Weird. you know an extra personal question or something, something that, that i really want to know that i i normally <laughs> wouldn't ask but the world is there to hear right totally that answer. makes him really uncomfortable <laughs> i mean okay. okay so so uh so one thing that that i've realized following some some trad shooters and hanging out with them is um <clears throat> uh if there's a golf ball size target with a compound a proficient shooter can hit that t- golf ball pretty much, you nine know, out of ten. nine out of ten uh, out to, let's say, you know, 80 yards. Mm-hmm. You guys, these guys are shooting eggs, you know, an egg challenge or whatever out to 80 <clears throat> plus yards mm-hmm. pretty efficiently. Now, with a with a con- with a with a trad bow, what I've what I've observed is <clears throat> they're absolutely in the kill zone every single time out yeah. to those distances. Yeah. But they're not hitting eggs. Right. So as I put it together, I'm like, well, uh, if you're shooting at an elk, that target is That's a backboard's worth of vitals, man. It's a huge target. <laughs> if you're hitting a stop sign consistently, like all the time, you're killing an elk. Yeah. Or, or, or even a little smaller. That is efficiency. That, that is the kill shot. Yeah. So if you're taking long-distance shots at animals with really small <laughs> vitals like a fox you're better <laughs> off doing that with a compound or my 17 <laughs> yeah, yeah seriously <laughs> just, oh. just throwing it out there oh. but like turkeys are those small you okay. bring it up because turkeys are those small target animals yeah and and i'll tell you a story so just so everybody knows matt basically got me into traditional shooting probably in i think it was march march about, um, yeah. i had ordered a carbon defiant uh from hoyt back in november and i know that that's become an, an extremely popular bow so you don't quite get them as fast as you may get some of their other bows right um and so Matt said, hey, dude, while you're waiting, you really should maybe try traditional, which when I was a kid, I used to shoot um, 
like subtle. <laughs> yeah, I'm bringing people to he's, the flock. Oh, dude, I'm he's just grabbing. He's trying them. to baptize us all into trad, <laughs> trad shooting, but um, no, you know, and, I, and so I, sh- I used to shoot a little uh, recurve, uh, bear recurve, when I was a, a kid, in, in uh-huh. little neighborhood tournaments and whatever else that we'd have, but. So I was like, "Yeah, man, let let's do it." So I ordered I ordered the Hoyt Buffalo. He basically got it all set up for me. Came to the office. I mean, we I was just ready to rip and roar and let it to let it go. And and st- and we we went to Wild Arrow, which is a shop that we like to go yep. to in Utah. And and uh, I think we started out at like ten yards. Put a little foam dot uh, or a little dot on the on the foam that we were shooting at. And of the four arrows, I shot three of them were in a, a four inch circle. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And Matt was probably more surprised than I was because I know how good I am. But um, <laughs> no, no, he was just like, man, like you're Harvard, natural. Harvard's in humility. Right. Exactly. <laughs> a lot of that. No, he's like, he's like, there. He's like <laughs> you're, you're natural. You know, you, 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 there's some things you need to work on, but, but you're, but you're, you, you, you've, you've, you've got, got the, the basics, right? Yep. So we stepped back about five feet and I think my group opened up from a four inch group to about an eight inch group. <laughs> And then we stepped back five more feet, and it was like a twenty inch group. Five right. more feet, it was like a forty inch group, it, like exponentially larger group, larger with just right? a few feet. One yard in com- in traditional is like twenty yards with a compound, in my opinion. It is, it, and, and and I can attest to that because That's it, why I'm it, so good at twenty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so good, <laughs> so good. <laughs> so so we had Jordan and I went on a turkey hunt in South Dakota in April. So I had basically two months to figure out how to shoot. 30 yards and hit a golf ball size target because you're either shooting a turkey in the face yep or you're gonna hit him in his in his guts which is uh <laughs> which is about the size of a golf ball okay yeah 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 so basically through that two month time we were practicing religiously trying to get out to that point i really wanted to get to 30 but by the time i went on that hunt i was super comfortable and really felt like i was effective at 20 yards you put a you put a, a one inch uh dot on foam yeah, yep. I could hit that dot. So um, we go on this turkey hunt, and Jordan's hunting with his compound. I'm hunting with my uh, my Hoyt buffalo. And man, if you ever have the chance to go hunt prairie turkeys in South Dakota, do it. They are so much fun. Yeah, it, it was a blast. And uh, I had multiple toms strutting at thirty to thirty five yards and drumming and strutting and drumming, just back and forth and back and forth. I can't make any more advance because there's literally no cover but these little chicory bushes. And uh, and I'm sitting there hiding, thinking, dude, if I had a compound, I could smoke the crap out of this thing. Right. But I got to get 10 right. to 15 yards closer, and that's just not going to happen. So I was able to, to, as you like to say, watch a lot of the wildlife, uh, <laughs> natural... What do you what do you call it? Behavior. Uh, behavior. <laughs> <laughs> because there was nothing I could do. And and what's funny is Jordan's sitting behind me at seventy yards and he's like he's like, dude, I could smoke that freaking thing all day, you know, and I'm just like and so for me I was like, Man, this like it, it really drove me that I had I, I wanted to find a way to get uh get in that extra ten, fifteen feet and any time I would try to just use my ninja moves, it just didn't work. There was not enough cover and boom, they're gone. So finally, we had an opportunity where Jordan was able to to get a Jake in, and and he actually got him into eight yards, Whoa. and uh, and smoked him at eight yards, and that was pretty freaking cool because that's my kind of shot right there. Oh yeah, it right is. But and that's what everybody wants. <laughs> that's what you want, and that's what that's what happened. But what was really cool is um, not only that we were able to have that experience, but that I was able to to obtain my goal. And that I didn't try and take something that I wasn't comfortable with. Right. And so now what's fun is because, you know, a few months later, we've been doing a lot more shooting, a lot more practicing. Now I feel a lot more comfortable that, at 40 that if I continue to do that and I've got those those strutting toms at 30 yards. Yeah. Oh, I'll take it all day long because I feel that confidence after practicing and getting that, that proper training. So it, you, it, it changes the game a lot when yeah. you switch from compound to traditional. Well, Aaron did the same thing on that bear hunt. He, you know, he got up there to like 60 yards, 50 yards over and over again, but couldn't find a way to get closer. And he had to come back, go back up and down, up and down the mountain, up the hill and tried to find different approaches. And finally he got, he just couldn't get any closer. And so he started squeaking like a little mouse and that bear just perked up and came in, you know, so it kind of helped close that distance by walking toward him. Uh, but there's ev- absolutely a challenge in getting into that range. And Aaron's like, man, it's so hard, like, getting to that range, you know, because, and I'm like, I haven't taken that many 60-yard shots my whole life, right? <laughs> like, I'm always trying to get to 30 or 40 at max. Oh, like, yeah. I'm just not, 
so so it's like I've never been the one popping eighty yard shots or anything like that effectively in right. in, in, in a lot. So for me, getting trying to get that close is sort of that's bow hunting. It's bow hunting for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of what I've been doing. Yeah, not that I'm not that good at it, but that's just kind of nat. I don't feel like I've sacrificed a, a lot of range like by uh, by, by switching. Right, I, yeah. I do that with a compound. So see, and that's a that's a a blessing and a benefit for you because you know where we hunt out on the wasatch front and in utah if you don't know how to and if you cannot practice out to 100 yards to be efficient at 60 to 70 you're not going to have a lot of shot opportunities yeah, yeah for sure there's some there's some open country stuff that's way different it is it really is and, and you know and i i know you, you like know, a you, lot of where i've hunted you couldn't even see 20 yards that's what i mean so you so that's what you're used to so that's the benefit i for brought you. my buddy from from utah open country to uh, Prince of Wales Island hunting bears. And he's like, I can't stand this place. I can't see anything. I hate that. I can't see anything. Yeah. I'm like, sure you can. <laughs> right there. He's like, <laughs> look up. What? He's like, that's 20 yards. I'm like, yeah, this is like normal. <laughs> and he's like, how do you hunt this? And I watch him hunt. I'm like, do you, you suck, man. You're, you, you, you're, you don't get it. Like you gotta, it's still hunting. You gotta like yep. mostly stand still. Stand yep. still and wait. We're going to walk. We're going to cover like a mile, but we're going to take all day to do it. Yeah. One step at a time, and you're just standing and looking and looking. I spend more time looking than I do walking. That, for a lot of people, is, is really foreign. And that's where I think I'd have a lot of fun with a recurve because everything is really actually close in that recurve range for, yeah. for yeah. me. That would be fun. That's what it's all about, man. It's For me, that's bow hunting turned into wanting to have those up-close intimate encounters with these animals really getting in that red zone and defying everything that animal has developed in its entire life right yeah it's it's, if you can get i mean i've i've i had a big bull tag the very first year that i ever started traditional archery i'd waited eight years to draw my limited entry utah tag Uh and i'd been shooting a compound and my buddy jeff that i talked about earlier was like dude you got to do with the trad bow it's like it's got to be black or gray you're going to shoot a trad bow you're not gonna He's, (laughs) he's pretty pushy but love him to death anyways so I wanted to do it. Yeah. And if I had had a compound on that hunt, there were so many times I could have shot great bulls. And I got really close with the recurve, but I walked away from that hunt deciding that, for me, bow hunting needed to be those up-close things, and I wanted to do that. And I've been fortunate enough to take um, – I shot a mule deer at three yards on the ground. And I've, so I've been, I've been able to have these really up-close, cool encounters with animals. And for me, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Until I'm in that red zone, I'm not really excited. And, I mean, hunting's exciting. That probably came out wrong. But I, I really want to get that close is it, what I'm it, trying to say. It's rewarding for you. Absolutely. Extremely rewarding. It takes it to that next level. Yep. I was going to say uh, when I was talking to Joel, one of the things he was trying to emphasize with me is if you learn to shoot the way he's with your mind, you know, controlling your mind, like the, really with this concentration, deliberate. He calls it iron track. mind, right? Yeah, iron mind referring? hunting, yep. iron mind. You know, if if you're really concentrating and, you, and you're executing that perfect shot on every shot, because you're you're actually engaged in the shot process the whole time, right? He's he said he he wanted to make it clear that you can pick up this trad bow, this trad bow, this trad bow, different trad bows, and with that same deliberate process, you can shoot them all effectively. Yep. So that's a lot. That's pretty contrary. And that was one thing I was going to ask you because he yeah. said the same thing about a compound. You know, given that things are, you got the draw lengths and everything. Right. Overall, though, the process is exactly the same from bow to bow to bow to bow, whether it's compound or traditional. In my mind, I had been thinking, and, and something that is true for me is I've got to be really familiar with my equipment, right? Yeah. Like, and when I pick up a bow that's not mine, my shot. It goes way down or a release that I have not used before. It's yeah. just, it, everything's off. And he was explaining to me how a lot of that has to do with making up for um, my shot process with mechanical advantage mm-hmm. in terms of being so familiar with my equipment that I've m- learned to minimize my input into the shot. But there is input. Like, right. I am. You have to shoot the bow. I, I am like jerking the bow and doing things and gripping it or do uh, on the release but i but because i'm so familiar with my bow and my equipment when i do that i've learned to 
to kind of minimize the impact of that. Right. But it's not a true, like, controlled shot. Mm-hmm. And so when I pick up a different bow or different release, now I'm contending with the different mechanical things I rely on being different for me and then and then putting, inputting a lot more into the shot, me- messing up the shot uh, more than I should. Yeah. So what do you think about that? Is he just smoking crack or is he on to something? No, he's, he's definitely on to something. And it, I, I think a lot of it has to do with being familiar with a ter- certain type of thing. Like for me... Um, I like a certain type of grip, but if I can get a couple of different bows, like for example, I was talking about my stalker, my big stick, and my buffalo, I could take all three of those bows and probably shoot them the exact same because the grips are very similar to me. The draw weights at my full draw, yeah, yeah, I, 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 the, everything's pretty dang similar. Apples to apples on all that stuff. Exactly, and I and I can just hop around. I mean, granted, sometimes I mean you can get a bow that's not cut to center or. Something. I mean, there's these little variables yeah, that yeah. will play into that as far as, you know, shelf to grip ratio and, and things like that, right? Little tiny things that are different from boyer to boyer. But wouldn't that shoot your release and your shot would be just as well? It's just the only thing that would be different is your aiming point. Yeah. Now, I mean, yeah. for the most part, right? Yeah. So, I mean, for example, like I, I brought both uh, both my longbow and my recurve here and I went up to the... And I've been shooting the stalker super, super well. I shot it up in Salt Lake, shot great, shot it yesterday, shot awesome. And I was really excited about this longbow, so I brought it out here. Uh-huh. And I went over to the little kid's course right here, and my first shot at 10 yards, I woofed it right over the back. I mean, I executed, to me, what felt like a perfect shot, but it just I wasn't familiar enough with the bow. And as I started you know, figuring out the bow and, and the sight window and everything, you know, then I could just drive tax with it. It was just a little bit different, but uh, within five shots. That's what I was going to say. Like is artillery, is Aaron says. You know, you exactly. kind of have to <laughs> launch a few, and then you like start to figure out your distances. Well, yep. that, that's what's cool. It seems like we've got a new bow showing up to the to the Mountain Ops uh, <laughs> HQ just about every day, or or we got guys that come in that want to show us their bows. What is it with traditional bow hunters? They got to have like twelve bows and. Do they like? They, they like want to shoot them all. It's, <laughs> it's, like, it's like our wives' purses. It's the only thing that we can accessorize with bows <laughs> yeah, and hats, right? <laughs> But uh, but what's cool is just exactly what he said is, you know, we'll take these bows, we'll go to that wild arrow shop, or we'll even just go in our warehouse, and within three or four shots, you've got that bow figured out, and you're like, yeah, you're stacking yeah, arrows. With it. And you're like, and, and I don't think you could do that with a compound, where you could just yeah. grab any of your buddy's bows. Or any release, right. or any side, and, or anything. And, and in four arrows, stack arrows like 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 that. I bet you you could give it, if the, if the draw length was prop. But that's what I was going to say, though, is the draw length has to be appropriate. So true, true. you and I could not. What's your draw length? 28 inches. Okay, so mine's 29. Yeah. So we're already, if I'm shooting your bow, I'm an inch short. Yeah, yeah. My wife can't, used uh, my long bow yesterday. Uh, she's getting a bow, but she hasn't got it yet. So we were up on the mountain shooting, and she's like, well, how do I, this draw length, it's like not for me, right? And I'm right. like, honey. It's whatever you pull it to, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's like a longbow. It's different. It, anybody can shoot it. Uh, it's it's higher poundage. You know, the further back, the further you, back get you pull it, it, the heavier it gets. Yeah, but uh, all of that is is it's pretty cool how uh, how how your trad bow works like that. Yep. Yeah, but they're, they're, they're super consistent as long as you've got something set up. And I, I can't believe you were making fun of my four-inch brace height, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I walked down, and your puff balls were touching the limbs. I'm like, I could barely fit my hand between the string and the throat of the grip. <laughs> All right, so I'm, I'm still new to this. Right? Well, I knew that it wasn't right, but I was like, how, how much of a difference can it make? Substantial oh, difference. There was, a, there was a gentleman that came up to me yesterday, and he had, I think it was a Trad Tech Titan Three. 19 inch riser and he had some bfx extreme limbs and he had a plunger and a flipper rest on it and everything he's like dude he's like i, I can't figure this bow out can do you have a second to help me i'm like oh yeah so we will go over to the kids range and i you know take my bow square and i take my stringer and everything and i look at his bow i'm like well this is a 64 inch bow right he's like yeah i'm like why is your brace height five inches so boyers will have a recommended brace height you know seven and a half to eight and a half so grab that bow yeah and uh for, you know for guys that are watching what we're talking about is the space from the throat of the grip, and I just measure to the back of the string. doesn't really matter whatever's consistent yep. for you, so right? So this distance from here to here needs to be, on average, 
it, it depends it, on the bow. It depends. It, on the bow. it totally depends on the bow. It can depend on pocket angle, type of limb, whether it's a static recurve. Or wh- but whatever. Why does why does that distance matter? And how do you shorten it, make it longer? Like the string is the string, right? Right. No, absolutely. So the the biggest reason that it, that it matters is it's going to change the way that the arrow is flexing around a bow. Also, um, certain bows. You know, the, the, the shorter a brace height, the longer the arrow's on a string, so it can break down the dynamic spine of an arrow differently. Got so it. usually what I do when I'm setting up a bow is I start right in the middle of the recommended brace height, and then I'll shoot. And I have a set arrow type or an arrow setup that I want to shoot every single time. I want my arrow 31 and a half inches. I want to shoot a 200-grain point, and I'm going to shoot a three-fletch on the back. I will shoot that on every single arrow. I can go from an injection to an axis to a trad axis. I could shoot a gold tip, but that's what I'm going to set my bow. That's what I want. That's 550 grains. So I'll start there, and then I'll basically figure out how to get that arrow to fly out of a specific bow. And so okay. I'll mess with the brace height to break down and, that And spine. basically to, to increase the brace height or decrease it, the string has got to be longer or shorter. Exactly. So basically all I do is I'll get a stringer, I'll unstring it, and I always add or take away twists from the bottom. If you add twists to the string, obviously it's pulling it together, which is going to open up the brace height, going to make it longer. Mm-hmm. If you lengthen the string, that means the limbs can move forward further minimizing your brace height. So that's you add and remove twists from the bottom bottom loop of the string. Got it. So, um, and you don't just stick your leg in it and bend the bow? Oh, heavens no. <laughs> I, I see people do that. Wrap I it w- around the I back run and, up just and just crank that <laughs> bad boy. <laughs> No, I'm not going to lie, when, no. when Matt, uh, when, when my that's bow... That's how I did it as a kid, right? You stick your leg in there, you bend oh. that sucker over. Yeah, because I think your limbs were like four-pound limbs. <laughs> Fiberglass <laughs> limbs. Yeah. <laughs> no, when, uh, when, when, my, when my buffalo showed up and Matt showed up to come help me set it up, he's like, you want me to put the string on? I'm like, no, dude, I got this. I've done this before. And I'm like trying to wrap it around my leg. He's like... Let me help your brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take that away from you real quick before we have an accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, absolutely always use a stringer, especially, you know, on, on wood. On any bow, you definitely should. But as you're putting your your foot in there, I mean, I've seen people hook their foot here and they'll slide it up. And I'd so be I do if, it a lot. I, I'd be lying if I said I didn't do it. But you can, over time, you can morph that bottom limb, and that and that's that's going to ruin your bow. And my other my other biggest pet peeve is like it gets when I twisted see, or something. Well, I see people lean their bow up against in the corner or something like this. Mm-hmm. That'll cause your bottom limb to morph. Gravity over time. I mean, people will go store their bow. For, I mean, that will twist a bottom limb so yeah. so easy. So, I never really unstring my bows, even a takedown recurve. I really don't. I just lay them flat on the ground like that. Or I'll hang it up by the strings or by the grip or something like so that. So at home, you don't unstring it very often? I, no. I just put them on the ground. I just lay them on the ground or put it in my closet on top of something where it can sit flat. With like 15 of them, it must take up a whole 10 by yeah, 10. Yeah, my wife hates me. Yeah, he's just <laughs> he's just kind of moved his wife's crap out and his, his bows. But, but if you hang it by the space. strings, it's fine? Yeah, it's, it's totally fine. I mean, the string's already pre-stretched and everything. It's not really going to mess with it. So I, I do that all the time. Wow. So, so yeah, don't, don't. Super cool. Don't put it through your leg. <laughs> All right, whatever. Okay, uh, so Casey, I'm going to turn it over to you. I am dying to eat this peanut butter bar. <laughs> I, have been, I have not Brian, eaten you eat yet your today. peanut butter bar, and let's get to the more important so questions. You guys today. Do a thing here. Yes, I'm getting hangry. Okay, so one of the questions that I want to ask Matt, and Matt, I don't want you to be politically correct. I don't want you to sugarcoat it. I want you I to. Never do. I want you to be. Um, I mean, raw and real in in these answers. Should if I go you could, Aaron please. Snyder on this? If you could go, if you could, if you could go Snyder on this, I'd appreciate it. But when somebody is, uh, I would say, new to traditional archery, even maybe advanced in traditional archery, what is a a humane slash appropriate shot for for someone to take? I'm talking distance. Mm-hmm. Ethical. Ethical, ethical shot on a deer size animal on a deer size animal i've always been one to say that ethical is determined by the shooting ability of an individual if i can hit a pie plate at 90 yards nine out of ten shots now i, I would i would never shoot in an animal at that distance but it's it's all about being comfortable and i i have this saying that i tell people all the time confidence kills 
right? Being able to be confident. And some people don't like that. Some people are like, oh, that guy's cocky, or whether it's Colby Bryant or LeBron James or whatever. Those guys have a certain type of swagger about them. You know, I mean, they just get on the court and, and they're the best out there. And I'm not saying you need to be the Kobe Bryant of, of traditional archer. Anybody needs to do that. But just believing and, and knowing for a fact that you can take a shot. For example, you know, you, Brian kind of started talking about shooting turkeys. I'd mentioned that I'd shot a turkey at 35 yards. And, and I'm not trying to come across, you know, arrogant or cocky or anything like that. I know for a fact I can make that shot all day, every single day, out of a ground blind. And, but I practice that. I'll go get my ground blind a month before turkey season starts, and I'll shoot from my I'll shoot from my ground blind every single day. I'll shoot twenty, thirty arrows every single time, and so it's just building that confidence. So for doesn't matter if you're advanced or whatever, if 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 you're confident in being able to make a shot, whether that's twenty yards, fifteen yards, or a hundred yards, whatever that is, if you think you can do it, you know, kind of let them ride. When arrows in the quiver don't deliver. Yeah, they don't. They don't. <laughs> So if you're questioning, if, you, if you're making your approach, you're making your stock, and you are questioning your ability of whether it's going to kill, don't take the shot. Wait for you to get to that confident distance that you know Absolutely. you're going to kill. And, and I have a funny story that goes with that case. Like I was talking about the first year that I picked up a trad bow and decided that this is how I wanted to hunt was when I drew that limited entry tag. There was one evening... Um, you know, these, this herd of elk were coming across a hillside and, you know, the bull was in the back, cows were in the front. And I literally ran down this canyon, ran up, thought they were going to come underneath me. Anyways, the cow started cutting up. And so I ninjaed my way through and I had this bull come in on the trail that I was on. And I'm looking uphill because his cows have gone like this. And he comes in at like, you know, 15, 20 yards and just screaming his head off. And I can't shoot him because there's a tree. And he moves up and he gets in front of me. And this bull, and, you know, I, th- I think about this all the time, but this bull stopped in front of me about 25 yards. And he stopped and he just looked at me. And we just had to stare down. And I told myself I wasn't going to shoot him, that I wasn't comfortable. I didn't think in that moment, I was like, I don't think that's a shot I need to take. I never filled my tag. It was probably, it wasn't the biggest bull in the world. I would have loved to have, have taken him, but... It was, I wasn't comfortable taking that shot where now it's, oh man, if it's, if it's within 40 yards, if I've got an elk in 40 yards, you bet an arrow's coming out of my bow. <laughs> Absolutely. freaking nice. So, so, so the next question is what is the biggest misconception in your opinion of traditional archery? It's kind of a broad question, but in yeah. your opinion, what is it? I think the biggest misconception is that it's an old person thing. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I used to go shoot traditional leagues and I'd walk in and there'd be these older gentlemen and with their self bows and everything. And I'm this 20 something year old kid. And they're like, what is this kid doing here? And so I would just hang around them and watch them shoot. And these guys were, I mean, <laughs> bless their hearts. They couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. So I think the, that perception was that traditional archery, one, you can't be accurate and two, that it was a dying thing. But I feel that's greatly changed, you know, being able to get Aaron to shoot a trad bow and a couple other, you know, if you want to call them influencers, if you will, um, people are starting to shoot that and see that you can shoot it well. So I think that's growing substantially. There was there was a guy that came up to me. He's like, why is everybody shooting trad bows nowadays? <laughs> is, is it the next skinny jeans? You know, I'm like, <laughs> well, it's, 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 there's knowledge out there. There's people that know how to do it. And, you know, with social media, I, YouTube, anything, you, you can find training and, and learn how to do well, that. Well, and let's be real, too. It's an evolution of, of an archer. A, yeah. a lot of times, you know, a guy will start out, you know, like hunting with a compound for a long time. And it's great because immediately right out of the gate, you're accurate. And accuracy is fun. Yeah. You know, hitting what you're aiming at, that's fun. Yeah. You get good at that. And then after a while, you're like, you know what? I want to try. I want to make it harder. Yeah. Right? I want to. And, and the same thing with animals. It's like you're, you're so thrilled to shoot your first spike buck, which I think is the dumbest animal on the planet. And <laughs> And so, no, no offense to anyone who, I mean, that was an accomplishment for me the first time, right? Like, wow, I did it. It's a pinnacle moment in your hunting Uh career. Now it's like, you know, and and as time went on, I was like, man, my first fork at home, my first three-point buck, you know, you you, you get. You progress. You progress to the point now where I don't want to shoot that. I want to shoot something else because I want it to be, I want that challenge. I want it to be harder. Yeah. I have evolved as a hunter. I've, I've, I've gotten more skills. And I think the same thing with archery. You know, you get so good at it to a certain point. It's like, well, I've, I, the evolution of a, of a hunter 
you know, I, I, of an archer has put me now with a, with a recurve in my hand. Yeah. And, and that's kind of the... That's where you want to be. Mm-hmm. And recurves aren't for everybody. I tell everybody that, you know, you should try one. But if but if you don't like it, don't let it ruin your, your the hobby and passion oh, of yeah. bow hunting. Don't and, let and it you, take that and away. You don't from have you. to be shooting a recurve to to have you know. No, like, like for me, uh, I don't feel any peer pressure. I mean, Aaron doesn't give me any crap at all, but other people do. Right, like you do. <laughs> um, no, like I I really I I I will shoot a, a recurve. It's fun. I've been shooting one, but I really like my compound. Yeah. I really like it. Absolutely. So, and, and, and in my opinion, honestly, because like, uh, you know, for me this year, I've actually decided to commit my, my uh, Defiant finally showed up a couple weeks ago and I went down and got it all set up. And, and, uh, and when, I, when I pulled it out of the box, <laughs> it felt like a 50-pound dumbbell, honestly. <laughs> Dude, that's why I like it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My wife Ryan my wants something to just exercise in his trees, My wife man. held my bow yesterday. Burpees. She's like, this thing is like... I'm like, it's heavy, but, but what, I've got my my weights on it on the my stabilizer and all that. Oh, Judas, and I mean, man, it's, you a, got it's an a, eight pound bow. Yeah, but what's interesting is is in relatively speaking, it's not that heavy though. It's just I've become oh, yeah. so used to something that's feather light, and Dude, so the, the, immediately the trad bow is ridiculous. I mean, it's like it's like feather. air. It is. It really is. And so immediately in my mind, I said, I'm going to be carrying this around all season. And my mind went back and and said, No, 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 no. My mind, I'm going to be carrying a stick bow all season. And, and at that moment, it was, it was more of a weight thing to me. I realized I'm going to, I, I, I want to see what I can do with this this season. So yeah. all of my archery hunts are going to be done with that. But, um, but the, the interesting progression in my life has been I started out shooting a recurve, got my first compound, uh, shot that through high school and, and hunted, uh, archery hunted through high school. Then after I graduated high school, I got into rifle hunting. Yeah. And then after getting sick of shooting a couple hundred yards, got in long distance hunting yeah. with long distance guns. And then one of my buddies got me back into hunting with a compound. And now this year I'm going to back to the recurve. So I've just <laughs> gone through the full spectrum. A D D. Yeah. So, but I'll tell yeah. you one th- one thing you know from brother. from <laughs> from doing all that is uh it's made each and every one of those other weapons uh-huh. more efficient by going to the compound. Yeah. The way I shoot uh, my long range rifles right now is absolutely ridiculous. I'm shooting at distances I never thought I could before because of the focus factor and that mental strength that I've created through focusing so intently on such a small object while shooting my traditional bow. Now, one of the things that we've noticed is as we've been shooting our bows and Jordan's kind of been flip-flopping back and forth between the compound and the traditional, he's got a lot of the compound form going. Yeah, yeah. And we're trying to help him to expand more and, and open up more. But the problem is, is he's, he's having a hard time with it. So to me, I almost think per season you've got to commit to yeah. one or the other to truly... got to uh, be black or white. Got, yeah, exactly. One thing to, to, to touch on that, I, when I was... Uh, Back to Joel Turner, I was talking to Scott Carr, who who has won a couple of the Train to Hunt events in the Men's Open Div- Masters Division. They were talking about when you're shooting your bow that it's actually an exercise. You use your bow to practice concentration, not to practice shooting your bow. It's like, like your mind gets better mm-hmm. if you shoot your bow right. I agree with that 100%. Yep. And so, because... It's so tempting to just just shoot. Just let it ride. Let it ride. But it's really every day and every shot is an, is, is an extreme level of self-discipline and concentration to stay focused on the actual shot. And one thing that Matt taught me, you know, when we first started going and shooting this thing, I'd have six arrows in my quiver and I'm... <laughs> He right, shot like one perfect arrow to his six. <laughs> he did, and that's what I learned. So after shooting about 12 arrows, I'm like, shoot, dude, I'm almost done. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm sore. I'm tired. I'm already feeling it. He's like, and he's shooting one arrow at a time. And, and so what I switched to and what he taught me was shoot one perfect arrow every single time. Not only will you be able to practice longer yeah. because of the, the endurance aspect of it, but you're, you're not like, oh, that one sucked. i got to shoot another one. you got to make sure that one arrow, because you're going to walk however far it is that you shot and go and retrieve that arrow every single time. You don't want to shoot a bad shot. It you got to think about it. It trains you to say, if I'm going to shoot just one, 
it's going to be a good shot. But there's a lot of guys who come out there, you know, and 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 they stand and they'll shoot and they'll they'll shoot five rounds. But and and they're feeling like they're practicing. Right. But I've been there before. You're just shooting over and over again. You're going th- you're going through the motion of just doing something and that's, you know, what Casey was just talking about. Perfect practice makes perfect. My goal with the trad bow, something that I'll never reach, is to be perfect. And so when I go and shoot an arrow, like Casey said, I'll, I'll just take one arrow to the range. I'll just shoot one, one at a time. I'll shoot one, and I'll wait five minutes while everyone unloads Those their quivers. Those freaking compound guys <laughs> that shoot like 600 arrows. <laughs> and then I'll go grab my arrow, but the whole time, you know, and, and it's taught me to recognize what I do in my shot. You know, I can feel if the string comes off my finger wrong. I can feel if the pressure wasn't right in my hand, in my yeah. elbow, in my shoulder, in my head position, all these things. And so it gives me a second to think about that, but it allows me to evaluate on a shot-to-shot basis and hopefully, you know, become better. At it, each shot, you're trying to be better. Yeah, it's so easy to n- not be present during the shot. You can go like, numb, right? You can just be like, you're just, you're just not calm, focused. Yeah. And and then there's a huge difference between everything being present during the shot, which I think translates very well into high pressure situations. Yeah. If you can be present during the shot, then you can handle that high pressure moment because you're you're taking your mind off of all of that and you're you're present, you're concentrating, you're going, okay. And you're you're going through your your shot sequence or your mantra, or whatever it is that you do to stay focused. Right. Which Brings me to another point. You know, uh, Joel talked about words. Words are what we can use. Positive affirmation. To be, stay focused. Yeah. Like, words are powerful. Uh, they allow us to bring our focus to a certain thing and, and stay on it. And uh, it's so tempting to just chuck the words and just pull back and just feel the shot. Yeah. But it doesn't work like that. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't work like that. Uh, I shoot way better when I'm actually talking to myself calmly and going through each piece of my sequence yep. and it, it helps me stay. It helps me to keep from pulling that trigger yeah. and just pulling it instead of, and, and just, and instead that's not my goal. My goal is to, is to use that back tension, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling until it just goes off. It goes so off. is, is keep pulling the, the phrase that's going through your mind when you're shooting or what is, what's, yes. is that what it is? Y- yeah. Like I, I liked what Joel said you know he's like get it done which was a fascinating concept for me because you know i pull back my bow my pins are up here and i slowly lower it down onto the site you know and then i'm like kind of around it you know and i'm really trying to stick that pin on there and he's like you know which is your which is your 20 yard pin i'm like the top one because you know that's your 20 yard pin uh and you know that's a 20 yard target yeah just put your pin on it well i was not really. You were sort of like slowly going down so you don't go past it. So, you, you know, it's like, he's like, just stick it on there. Just do it. He's like, just do it. So I drew back and just stuck it there. And it just stuck there. <laughs> like, huh, I wonder why I do this all the time. Yeah. Like, whoa. Because that's what people t- have taught you. That is the general conception of what you need to do when Brandon Bates is dancing like a stripper. <laughs> you. That's, that's right. Can you come do that in front of the camera so everybody watching on YouTube can enjoy that just as much as we did? i got to my ball. I'm about to drop a beat for you, Brandon. Br- Brandon Bates, everybody from the National uh, <laughs> Federation of Dancers. <laughs> That's oh, right. That is that is true. Right. Yesterday was National Dance Day, and he's just uh, he's off by a few hours, but that's all right. <laughs> But no, you're right that the positive affirmation and, and telling yourself that you're able to do something and, and just doing it. Like for me, I, I told these guys yesterday, when I when I go to shoot a target, you know, I'll step up and being able to pick a spot, whether it's, you know, a hole that an arrow's already gone in or where sun's hitting on a target, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm picking my spot. And then from there, I tell myself, lights out. Like I tell myself, yeah. lights out. Like this is it. If When I'm hunting, it's lights out. Like I'm telling that animal it's game over. And to me that, like I say that now and I get this, I get this little, uh, I get goosebumps telling myself that cause it, it, it pumps me up basically for that shot. So it's, yeah, it's so powerful. Words he, are powerful. He was like, here we go. Is what he said. Here we go. You know, he's at full draw and he's doing his things like, here we go. And then boom. Um, See, he was explaining how that shot, how that, that moment tells him and 
you know, helps them focus. I'm still trying to figure out for me, you know, what that is, what, what that, that phrase is, is and how that works. See, my, my phrase, and if you shoot with me, you'll know when I'm excited about my shot because I'll yell out, nailed it. <laughs> but that's because that's my, my, what's going through my mind is nail it, nail it, nail it, nail it. Boom. And when I hit it, nailed it you know <laughs> i mean so so it's it's, it's interesting so, how that can do that for everyone's you. got something different, <laughs> yeah, right yeah. right yep but it, it's the positive part because a lot of times people they come up especially stuff to like this and the, the first thing they step up to a target it's hard and they think don't miss that's the first thing yeah, that yeah. goes through their mind yep. it's like positive 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 come uh, up and be like uh, out. honestly i'm thinking back tension and keep pulling back right. tension keep pulling keep pulling keep pulling back tension because I have a tendency to just kind of collapse and then pull with my shoulder right. instead of open up instead of opening and expanding in the front, and that's a whole different body mechanic. And be honest, before I got my Hoyt Defiant, I shot pretty well like that. But with that Defiant, it's like I shoot that bow so much better when I expand and pull through. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. And so that's been a. It's it's like I'm even I'm sore. I've been shooting for a whole week <laughs> in my, the right my, places. My back, I'm sore back there, in a where where I never sore. You so never I'm, built those muscles. Before. I'm still getting those. No, I mean, I, it's too busy. I was at a. I was. Yeah. <laughs> I was. At, <laughs> no, seriously, I was at at a bow shop, and uh, the dude had an elite compound bow, and he pulled the bow back, you know, full draw, and then he tilted it down like this side you know so it's pointed at the ground at full draw and then he just moved his hand yeah and the bow stayed i've seen people do that on scales and the bow just stayed at full draw just from the weight of the bow because the let off is is so huge right and then you know grabbed it and okay and so you can imagine that with that kind of back wall and, and and that kind of valley and that kind of let off that you don't need back tension no. You don't really need to pull through. You, there's a lot of things that, that, not to knock on an elite compound or anything like that. It's just something I observe that there's a difference there. I couldn't do that with my Hoyt, Hoyt Defiant. No. If Tension I, is not a bad thing. It no, stabilizes. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, that's what I was going to say is it's, it's sort of uh, brought me back into shooting the way I should be shooting. And it translates into the into the... The stick bow. The stick bow, so much more accurately, so much better than than that kind of let off would. Where you just can't pull back like that and just be coll- collapse inward and be consistent. Right. Oh, yeah. So it's a it's yeah. I'm I kind of I'm always evolving as a as an archery hunter and as a as an archer, getting you know changing my shot, learning, changing, yeah. learning, changing, and uh, and and I've gotten pretty good at what I do now. But I'm excited to to you know, grow that to the next level using a lot of things I've learned just in the past year. Yep. That's what it's all about is, is you gotta, you, you can't ever settle. And I mean, some people are happy with picking up their bow, you know, a week before the hunt and going out and shooting in the backyard, 20 yards. And, and that's their confidence boost. And I know people that do that and kill a lot of animals and that's good for them. But there's, you know, guys like us, if you will, that want to go out and it's like, I want to be the best I can. And that's, you know, that's a personal battle with yourself. You set those goals and you work to achieve them. Yeah, I, I don't really want to be the best I can. I just want to be better than you and everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> you're not the be better than myself. I want to post the best pictures on social media. I want to be better than, media, so yeah, than everybody. So I want to be better than you and better than you and better than you. Yeah, no, no. You no. know, I, I would say, like, for me, I, I, I didn't lose the uh, the fire of the compound by any means. but And I probably shot my Hoyt Nitrum better than any bow that I've ever shot last year. Mm-hmm. I literally ran um, a couple rounds last year here at the Total Archery Challenge. And didn't lose one arrow. I mean, and it was just, I could shoot that thing anywhere I wanted at any distance. I was so accurate with it. Um, but for people that, you know, I, I, I told my story of how I got back into this, but for people that maybe have lost that passion and maybe are, are losing the excitement of a compound bow. Pick up a recurve. Pick up a recurve because it brings so much challenge back into it. And those that are like, oh, you know, you know, I, I haven't lost it, but I'd like to see how fun it is. Be careful <laughs> because it's extremely addicting. Uh, uh, Matt always says, you know, the tug is the drug, and it's so it's so true. Uh, and by tug, he means, you know, tugging that string back, but not doing actual physical drugs. But uh, <laughs> but what, what we experienced even just a, a few nights ago, we were up at the practice range, and Corey uh, Jacobson and Dirk Durham, 
uh, and a couple of guys from Elk 101 were up there, and, and they wanted to have a trad shoot-off. Mind you, none of these guys have ever shot a trad bow, and they wanted to shoot against Matt and I. Yeah. And uh, what was interesting is we did a, a little quick practice course, let them shoot about, mm, I don't know, six, eight arrows each yep. to, to get used to it. Then we had the, the practice range. But what I saw is when they were shooting their compounds as we were kind of warming yeah, up, yeah. it was just dead serious. And they were just, they were smoking stuff. As soon as, and especially Dirk, Corey's got a pretty good poker face, but <laughs> <laughs> when Dirk hit, and he hit, hit relatively close to the bullseye on a 20-yard target, dude, he with lit up. Bow. With the stick bow. Yep. He lit up. And he was like, did you see that? I hit that. <laughs> I hit, did everybody see that? And we're all like, what? You know, we're, we're yeah. cheering, we're rooting for him. He gets up, he shoots another one, boom, almost stacks it on top of the same arrow. And he's like, I just did that again. Like, all of a sudden you saw excitement come back in them where it was just so serious. And so we get up to Corey, and Corey's, Corey's like, all right, let's do this, you know. And we're trying to walk him through it. And, and uh, he's like, all right, I'm, I'm ready. And so he basically took about 70% of what we said and then just kind of did his own thing and just, mm-hmm. and he's like, and he hit the target, but he's like, oh, wow, you know that? That's kind of fun. And, and then he took a second shot, and it was, like, way off from his first shot. And he's, and yeah, I could see he's, he's kind of getting frustrated. Like, his first shot was really good, and he's like, oh, wait, maybe this isn't as easy as, as these guys are kind yeah, of making yeah. it look or whatever. But then I said, here, let me, let me see it real quick. Let me. So I shot one, and he, he, as I noticed, he was starting to pay a little bit more attention because I hit almost dead center bullseye on the shot. And so he's like, what did he do different? And then he realized I was using an anchor point. And his mm. problem on his first two shots is he kind of was snap shooting, just random back, yeah, wherever. Yeah. Even though we taught him about an anchor point, he's just too cool to listen. <laughs> yeah. So then Corey is like, okay, how do I need to anchor? He's, he's like, he's wanting a little bit more information. So we teach him how to anchor, expansion, everything he's got to do. And boom, 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 boom. You just start seeing this awesome consistency at 20 to 30 yards from Corey. So he's like, all right, I'm ready. Let's do this thing. So I think I shot the first shot, which was about three inches high of dead center. Yeah. And then the next one was Dirk, who was almost stacked right on top of me. And then the next one was me. And was I, you and I was out by like five inches. I'd freaking yeah, dump that he, shot. He dumped it. <laughs> and then They're Jordan like, they look at me like, what the heck? Jordan shot. I think he was missed it probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun to bash him when he's not on here. When I'm not with him together. <laughs> no, he's 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 fun to shoot with with those things because we give him a lot of crap. But no, so he he shoots off and then Corey shoots, and basically, I mean, it was it was probably within two inches of bullseye. So he won. And, uh, and so it was, so I turned to him and I said, and this was at a 20 yard target. Yeah. And so I turned to him and I said, Corey, how often do you get bulls within, uh, or no, before that I said, so are you, you ready to make the switch? And he's just like, what did he say? He said, uh, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced yet. I'm not, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced I could kill an animal with this. And mind you, we're shooting at a 3d target. That's about the size of a stop sign. Right. And I said, Corey, how often can you get a bull within 20 yards? Yeah. He said. 50% 50% of the time. I mean, I shot my last one at eight yards, you know, right in the throat. Right, right. And I was like, that was 20 yards. That was a stop sign. That was a kill shot. Right. You can do this. And you could see the wheels oh, start yeah. turning. Well, uh, uh, one thing, that's exactly what goes through my mind, too. It's like most of these shots I take are very close. And so, you know, if I can become proficient with a stick bow at 30 and under... I could, I'd oh, have yeah. a blast. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. But one thing I was going to say is um, one thing that Joel and I got to talking about was, and I've noticed this, when, when a person picks up a stick bow for the first time, boom, they kind of, they shoot pretty well, and they pick up a compound for the first time. They're like, most people who pick them up for the first time get sucked right in because they're not in their head yet. They're, they shoot well. <laughs> right. Yeah. They're like, wow, do you see that? But then... Joel explain how the body starts subconsciously bracing for this impact. Like that shot going off is like, it's like boom in your face. Right. It's right. Like, and, and at first it's like, it's like the surprise release because you're so new to it. You don't, you don't know. So you're getting these better shots. And then the more you shoot and the more you shoot, the more people start getting into the shot and, and anticipating, anticipating and it. doing these things. And, and then the shot goes down into the toilet. Right. And uh, then they got to f- kind of fight their way back out of that. Uh, I thought that was pretty interesting uh, because I can see that 
with people. Like I've seen a lot of people pick up a stick bone and just nail stuff. Yeah. And then so they get a bow, and about a month or two after they've gotten it, they can't hit anything. Oh, I experienced that. I did the first month. You know, I was I was doing pretty good, especially once we upped my limbs. I started out with forty pound limbs, and then now I'm forty eight at twenty eight, and uh, I just I was like, man, maybe I need to go back to forty, but I knew I needed to pull a little bit more poundage. But man, I was all over the place, and I was so in my head. And 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 what Matt told me is, dude, if you're having a bad day, mm-hmm. walk away. And then, but when I was having a good day, don't stop. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Unless the wife's going to kill you, don't stop. Well, I noticed that uh, that Joel was a big fan of the clicker, big yeah. fan of that that because that surprise it helps you yep. perfect that 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 con- that surprise release. Yeah. Right? So, what is is Aaron too cool for a clicker? What's what's the deal with Snyder? To each their own. He's he's got he great resources you know he goes and shoots with uh the clum guys over at rocky mountain specialty gear he's those guys are phenomenal individuals but he's got great people to go shoot with and that's kind of his style and anybody that knows aaron kind of knows that he does have an iron mind if you will he's very strong-minded and and he can control that and he's the type of person that he's good at stuff but he'll listen to him if you want to give him advice i remember when he first called me up when i was over at hoyt and he's like "I'm, i'm thinking about trying traditional archery i'm tired of people you know talking smack on me for shooting little animals so i'm just going to get a recurve and prove them that i can kill whatever yeah with the stick bow and i mean we would have daily conversations you know i got him a bow to try and then it was how do you do this how do you do that how do you do this and we would talk on the phone all the time and you could just see him developing his shot he'd send me videos and how's my form and how's this and and he just and he figured out his shot and that's why i say you know my shot's not for everybody i look at Olympic archers and how they shoot in their form, very right, upright, right. you know, and, and those guys are shooting out to 90 meters accurately. I'm like, well, if that's what they're doing, I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it in traditional archery. And that's what's created my shot. And I've kind of instilled that in Casey, just yeah. being able to help him out a little bit. And Casey's a phenomenal shot. I mean, I know a lot of people that shoot trad bows and Casey will probably outshoot most of them. And he's only been shooting it since March. So, yeah. but he listens and I'm not saying I'm the greatest teacher. By he's any means, he's but he pretty much Miyagi. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, true. Like he washed like, my truck a lot, you know. Yeah. Like, whole. <laughs> like I haven't got too into the trad thing because uh, you know I'm going to be in Colorado here next week. I actually move there, and I'll be able to shoot with Aaron and the yeah. clums and stuff. And I'm like, you know, let's just do this with a teacher there. It'll be that much easier than doing it, it by myself. It's so important it to helps. learn it right. But, you see a lot of guys that. I'm, go ahead, Brian. Well, I was just going to say, but one thing that surprised me, one thing that got me thinking about this, it, sometimes we focus, and I feel like I focus on my release and how I'm holding the bow and my bow arm and all of these things that go into the shot. And when I was with Joel, he wasn't focused on any of that. Yeah. It, we, we, we were, like, really focused on controlling that surprise release that shot you know and i'm like you know what there's i realized because my groups were so freaking tight that had a lot more to do with between the ears than it did all this stuff around my shoulders and how i'm holding it and all that which is what i obsessed about before now matt tell me if i'm wrong but this is just what i've observed in myself as i've gone through this 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 uh trad progression is I'm not so worried. Once I understand the mechanics and the form and everything that needs to be happened, I'm not so worried about that. I'm trying to get muscle memory on all of that. But what I'm trying to do is just mentally think about it. But then after I take my shot, I kind of go back through my shot all the way from when I drew back to when I released. Yeah. And what I watch is, and I can tell you now what I'm, I'm saying, nail it, nail it, nail it. I'm not saying keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. I know I just know subconsciously i got to keep doing that. But consciously, I'm saying nail it, nail it, nail it. And then as I go back through my shot, I can say, oh, that went left because I plucked it. And I knew that I plucked it. And so then I keep going. I'm like, why did I pluck it? And then I can actually diagnose almost to a T why it was that I plucked it and why I did it. So on my next shot, it's, it's, I just say to myself, execute. Yeah. get back nail it I don't worry about it but then I go back through my shot each and every time and as I've done that I found I don't have to because I started out like you just thinking keep pulling keep pulling keep pulling alright boom 
And it was like I was not, I was probably shooting great, but I wasn't hitting great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so once I was able to focus more on the object and then go back through my shot, it really improved everything about the entire experience. Yeah. And, and I think one of the big things is you shoot a bow because you want to hit what you're aiming at, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, it's you could cool. have the sloppiest form out there, but if you're shooting lights out, more power to you. You know, yep. it, it's, it's, it's fun to have that fun, that, that form and, and hey, feel back good about to that it. whole golf swing. You watch right. some guys that just are more so unorthodox. They, they buck the whole system. You know, how they do it is completely weird. I mean, happy Gilmore is a prime example of that. <laughs> but, <laughs> But they have perfected that shot. that shot, and they can repeat it over and over again with uncanny accuracy. Not that anyone else should try and do it that way. Right. Uh, because that's, that's a very difficult thing to achieve. Right. There's a lot, more, there's a lot easier uh, techniques and, and, and right. form to gra- grab onto to, to start with. But still, um, yeah, it'll be fun to go to Colorado and, you know, and, and – and uh, have Aaron stand there, which he, he watched me shoot when we were in BC for a little bit. And, and it'll be nice to have some instruction. Was the words out of his mouth the first time he saw you shoot, you need a lot of work? No. <laughs> oh, good. Then you're no, in a good he, shape. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't say that all the though. He said uh, he, he watched how my shot execution fell to crap uh, a lot, you know, often. You know, he's like, you're pretty sloppy. Right there, <laughs> yeah. um, so it'll it'll be cool to to focus on that a little more and this right here you know a total archery challenge these kind of events they they really push you they they really open your eyes to how how much growth you still have you know you might be you know a back or backyard hero you know you can stick everything at every yardage you come here and it's like not the same or on a live animal you're you're not the same yeah And and all of that is this this really does help with the live animal deal. You yeah, know, absolutely. The, the real thing. Practice makes perfect. Practice in your hunting conditions and perfect practice makes Dude, perfect. Dude, that Vortex booth looks like it's going to fly away. It probably, probably will. It's got a couple There's a few tie downs there, but This is Yeah, yesterday it flash rained on us, you know. Dude, how many arrows are in that dude's quiver? Mm. Uh, I'm saying full dozen at yeah. least. Yeah, those are cedars though. That guy's a bad A. Yeah. That's a that ponytail he's rocking just what, lets what, you know he's gonna slay every what single kind of piece bow of is that? up there. That, that looks that like a bear Howard Montana. Hill? No, that looks like a bear Montana, the old M. Hey dude, we got there. another Trad Mama over here. Look at that. <laughs> That's my, awesome. my wife, it's been fun. She uh, she'll come in the backyard and shoot with me. Um, but you know, the forty eight pound limbs are a little bit much for her, so after about three shots she's done. But <laughs> um but she's had a lot of fun. Uh, Nicole so. looked jacked. I don't know what you're talking about. She is jacked. She's just she's got to get off that mountain ops or else she's gonna start getting bigger <laughs> than me. <laughs> no, uh, she, but what's cool is uh, I called up Evan down at Hoyt before we came here and I said, "Dude, can you get me a buffalo and 30 pound limbs? I want uh, I want Nicole to be able to come shoot the course with us." And I'll tell you what, man, that was it was cool to for when I was getting good shots on stuff. Her last shot of the day was a 38 yard. 12 ring center of center yeah on a feeding doe and we were all freaking out she was freaking out and she hit probably 90 percent of the target she'd hit foam on it and uh it was it was super cool because me and my wife literally have nothing in common we, we sometimes <laughs> wonder why we why we ever got married but uh and i've, I've mentioned that before physical but, attraction oh for sure dude she's smoking hot <laughs> um do you want After to, that? He's hey, baby, come here and wave to the camera <laughs> real quick so everybody can see who I'm talking about. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, it, so it's, it's exciting to see her have fun with it, and she was. And, and for that to be a common uh, interest now. Exactly. That's cool. Like, yeah. I brought my whole family up here. My kids have bows, which, you know, coming to the Total Archery Challenge is a great family thing. Uh, little, little kids might want to stick to some of these targets because this mountain is for real yeah i would say probably under under 10 years old maybe stick down here a little bit have some fun on the range or, or only do the locals course yeah. but over 10 man tear it up. it's 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 physically you know it's a it's serious hiking and climbing and it gets hot but the you know we bow hunters especially you know it's just that we live for that but yep we we rode the lift up right <laughs> We practice our bows down here. We get on the lift. This is how it is with kids, right? (laughs) 
My, my daughter has four arrows at the bottom of the lift. At the top, she has none. <laughs> I'm like, where are your arrows? She's like, I don't know. I'm like, did you stick them in your quiver? She's like, yeah. I'm like, all the way in? I'm like, did you snap them down? She's like, um, I stuck them in the foam. So she <laughs> stuck the they, tips in the foam and just let them kind of lay there. So they all fell out on the way up. And then <laughs> I'm like, well, you can share your sister's arrows. Yeah. So my, her sister goes out to take her first shot, and she's like, uh, where's my release? I'm like, I don't know. It's your release. Where is it? <laughs> Am I your release's keeper? <laughs> she's like, uh... So we had to come back down the mountain and find her release over here in the, in the target section. Going for a ride down the mountain. Right. <laughs> you Brett. Hannah. Hey, Hannah. What are we doing? Sticking my tongue out. But where are we going? Down the mountain. Enjoyed. What? Down the mountain. Why? Abby lost her arrows and Kate lost her release. She seems excited to tell everyone how you guys screwed up. <laughs> and then we got back up there, and then they, then they, sh we shot about ten targets, and they were done. They were tired. And all sunburned, and I was like, I called it. I have called you seen Casey's. I called neck? the game. I was like, dude, we have, have got you to seen what your neck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, there's a reason why I have a hoodie on right now. I am not going in the sun today, dude. It got real. Like it was getting the the. the I, I I looked at my daughter's neck. I'm like, oh, we got to get down. Yeah. We got to get down. And Suzanne's like, oh, it doesn't look too bad. I'm like we're getting off the mountain, and we we came straight off. And then I'm glad we did because they were they were burnt pretty good yet last night. Yeah. They had a hard time sleeping. Yeah, you get up in this elevation, the air is a little bit uh, unforgiving as well. Well, I was going to say, we were all, we ha had a lot of sun all summer. We, we've we been, you know, I just assumed, you know. Another day. Yeah, we've been in the hot sun all day, ever swimming, you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, but up here, this is a different sun, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Something, it, something's different. It definitely here. is. It's like when we were sitting up on the top, because you're another 2,000 feet higher at uh, the Total Archer Challenge in Utah and... And, man, you get up on the top, and that sun comes out, and it just starts roasting you. Yeah, we just did it a little over a week ago, and I wasn't burnt from that at all. But this got me. Maybe there's something about the big, the big, big sky. sky the big area sky area is, like, torching hot. So, anyway, um, thanks, guys, for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having us, like Sharing always. Sharing your, uh, your, your thoughts and ideas and the trad life. You know it. Uh, it's pretty cool to see see all this going down. I was going to say earlier when you were talking about, is this just a phase or is, a, is this sort of like skinny jeans, you know, <laughs> thing or what is the deal? Skinny jeans and neck warmers. Yeah, I think, no, I think that archery is getting more and more popular yep. all the time. And I feel it just in the, the, you know, with the films and the movies that have come out that have popularized archery. Yeah. But, but more than that, uh, you know, the I information is just out there. And people, I think, are craving to get outside, shoot bows, and do and something do new. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and then you got the food movement and the meat movement with people really wanting to get their own meat and get organic and, and you know, get back to nature. So all of that stuff is, is real good. It's a good time. To it's be a good direction. A bow hunter, be an archer. It's a so good time. Another great thing about the trad life is it's relatively inexpensive to get started in it as well. Yeah. Um, so that's that's always nice as well. But one of the things, you know, it's it's interesting. Matt and I have conversations about this all the time. But we're like, you know, let's uh, let's let's not that we want to be the face or anything of the traditional archery for those that are of our age and generation. But let's try and be a part of that fire that's that's starting to burn of creating that excitement here in in that with that trad life and. And, and so one of the things that we're actually going to start doing is, is uh, these trad life classes um, at that wild arrow archery there in Centerville, Utah. And, uh, nice. And so one, and, and, and I think it's going to be super beneficial for anybody that would ever be able to come. But 
to just be able to sit down and have Matt walk you through everything, get you on point, and then let you go, I mean, I think it's a great way to get started and going. So the more that that can happen all throughout the country, the more that fire is just going to continue to burn and continue to grow. So. Yeah, because not everybody has a Rocky Mountain specialty gear. No, right? with, exactly. With experts and guys who can help you and teach you and show you this trad stuff. And Yeah. And uh, uh, that said, you know, it's nice to have one-on-one coaching. But uh, I think there's a lot that you can learn through stuff like Joel Turner's shooting course. Mm-hmm. Through yep. You can get online and look at, uh, you know, different video instruction. Record yourself shooting. See if you're shooting similar. Tweak your stuff. You can do, learn a lot. When I first started lifting weights and learning Olympic lifts and their complex movements, uh, some of them I couldn't even try like an overhead squat I couldn't do at all I couldn't even get in positions and so there were right. progressions I just watched videos of guys that were showing you how to do it and I practiced videotape yep. myself come here honey record this you know <laughs> and she's recording me and I look back at it and and it's uh there's a lot you can do just t- with today's world there's a yep. lot you can do at home without having to have a one-on-one instructor absolutely so Every, it's it's so accessible. I think that's one of the reasons why it's also getting more and more popular as well as hunting. We, with all the information out there now, you've put it in the hands of, of everyone. It's not just information kept for a select few. Anyone right. can get online, learn how to debone an elk, learn how to shoot, learn, learn how, where what animal behavior is, how to hunt, how to use Google Earth, and you name it. Corey's course on elk hunting at uh, Elk 101. Another phenomenal resource. All that stuff is just awesome. It yep. is. So, anyway, thanks, guys. Thank you, Brian. Stay gritty. You're the man. Let's go shoot. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Sure. <laughs> We've got some words of wisdom for you today. Say what you mean, mean what you say, but don't say it mean. This is a famous saying from Dr. Seuss. Okay, gritty friends. I hope you enjoyed that podcast. If you did, please take a moment to leave us a review on iTunes, Podbean, or Stitcher. We love reading your reviews. And connect with us on social media if you're on there. Look us up on Facebook and Instagram, and take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can receive notifications when we upload new videos. We've got a sweet deal with Mountain Ops. You get 20% off on all Mountain Ops supplements, combo packs, and apparel when you type in the word gritty at checkout. If you're a hardcore elk hunter, or you want to be, go to the Elk 101 website online and check them out. Our friend Corey Jacobson is killing it with some of the best elk hunting information and entertainment on the web. Alright friends, let me leave you with one other quote from Theodore Roosevelt who said, It behooves every man to remember that the work of the critic is of altogether secondary importance, and that, in the end, progress is accomplished by the man who does things. We all have a choice. We can be people who do things or people who criticize the work of others. It's pretty simple, really. Get out there and do your thing. Good luck on your hunts and stay gritty. This is Ty Stubblefield, and you're listening to the Gritty Bowman. Gritty Bowman. (laughs) You always better with the camera on? Yeah. She lives for the camera, dude. (laughs) Can you tell? I just hopped right in. That's right. Quartering two mule deer shot, followed up by a turkey. I got this. Be call. Tread like. <laughs> Boom. Nice shot. Learn to snap shoot. Two arrows in under 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Learn to snap shoot. Here's the clinic. All right. It sure is fun though. Prepare to be schooled. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll give you a countdown from three after one, you start. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh, shoot. Well, like, things are going well. Air off, off the rest. Rest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Three, two, one. Good shot. Excellent. Eight seconds. Nice. It can't be done. Well, it can't be done. Shut up. <laughs> shut up. Your turn, Brian. <laughs> Trad Padawan Brian call to the main stage for his two 10 second shots. Here we go. Three, two. Whoa. whoa, whoa. Oh, you were going to start? Yeah, when I get down. When he gets to one, you get a draw. Yeah. I thought you were already like, no, nope. count. Three, two, one. Eight 
eight and a second, it's eight and a half seconds. Oh, I should have what taken a couple seconds longer. Ankle? I think I wrecked your arrow. <laughs> Pin to the ground. To the ground. That That's what you call the deadly ankle shot. And the Achilles only, tendon shot. Only the real gritty people can make that shot. I made it. It takes them down, and then, we, then from there we run them down. Keep telling yourself that. They'll bleed out eventually, right? They, they don't have wings. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Matt, what's going through your mind pre-shot sequence here? Just about to turn on the lights out. Okay. Three, two, one. Eight seconds. Time. <laughs> you are slow. I'm way slow. <laughs> and as you can see when I do it, I miss. <laughs> hey, that's the deadly neck shot. Boom. Bam. How far is this? 42, 43. Probably. 40 plus. Jeez. Oh, right below. Us. That looked like a snapshot, didn't it? Like, did you even get it back? Like, it was back. Bam! Oh, um, both of them are low. It may be further than forty. It's funny. Man. I've learned. It's like you get to further distances. And it's hard to trust yourself sometimes. You'll come back and you're you're and you're doubting that shot. And so it's it's hard to hit your clicker or your instinctive point or whatever that is. Dude. So I think that's further than 50. I think it is too. Uh, further, uh, further than 40. I think it's like 45 yards. Okay, here we'll have that, you. Do you have a range finder? We'll, yes. We'll, okay, you shoot it and then we'll range it. Okay. Well, all three of mine are in the feet. Okay. <laughs> first, first rule of child life, wear feel, your hat like Brian. I feel like we're at 50 yards. Dude, this was strategic. The sun was beating this direction. Now this is trad life transformation. Oh, okay. Right here. Transformers. Got a cloud cover. Yeah, this clouds came out, thank goodness, because I'm a little, a little red. Okay, I got the, what I'm calling the Matt Davis grip. That helps take care of my... You know, get gets the forearm out of the way. It's getting a little beat up today. Shooting well. Shooting well. I like this tab. I like this bow. Let's see how I watch this. Oh. Heck yeah, dude. Up and down was perfect. Let man. me see your tail feathers. Nice. Yeah, hip foam. Dude, I'm wondering how far this is. Okay. Shake it out. This, this, this is wearing my arm out, man. <laughs> how many arrows have we shot? Feels like 100. Probably pretty close. Okay, what happened on that one? Oh, the bow hit my chest. Here, just... We'll just erase that, dude. <laughs> just edit that He's out. that guy. Seamless. He's that guy. Only shows the, the glory shots. Right. Uh, I don't think I pulled it back far enough. I don't think you did either because you landed about eight I short in front of the target. <laughs> <laughs> now Casey's just being a butt punch. <laughs> One of the many reasons I love him. All right, Casey. Check this out. Ooh. Ooh, I saw the dust on that one. Dude, it was right on though. Perfect height. Did you see that? It just was, you know, a whole animal to the right. But Brian, did it kill it? Did it kill the, the animal? No, but here's, here's the thing. It ain't over yet. With Trad, you just get another arrow until you hit it. So that's why so many people are getting into it. You just get another arrow. That's right. It's like second, third, fourth shot is when you actually hit it. The first one's a gauge feel and distance. You know? Actually, no, I felt pretty good. I'm gonna have to range that. That looks like it's far. Yeah, we'll range it. My guess is it's closer to 50 than 40. Nice shot, Matt. range on this. My guess was 43 yards. 45. 
I'm saying at 47 to 50. I keep clicking the button hoping it's something else. Does it have to be that range? It's 40 on the button. Oh, no way. We all suck. It's but I, was, but Matt, I sucked the least. That is true. <laughs> Matt sucked the least. I probably sucked the most. I want to try again. But we'll do it again. Now that we know it's 40, that helps a little bit. All right. Good shots, dudes. Stink nugget. So when cameras don't roll, we smoke turkeys. That was a hard shot. Now that it's on, let's see what we can do. It's a little bit low from the first. Dang, well done. Got to figure it out now. A little touch high. Bring that down about a foot. Getting used to that bow? Yep. First time out with it, so just figuring it out. Money. Wow. Make money, it rain. Money, money. Dang, straight on. Money shot. Matt, jump it like a top, baby. Hat backwards. Ooh, yeah, you need to fix that mama job of bad sauce. Way. Oof. Left to right's a little off, but your Perfect elevation's good. Yeah. It's tough. When the arrow's not tuned to you, that definitely is going to affect your accuracy. But because I from back here, good, I was dude. watching that. Keep telling them that. I was watching the arrow and I was like, oh, it's gonna nail that tree. It's really important to tell him he looks good, feels good, <laughs> smells good. Um, don't try to get too homosexual. <laughs> but you know, you want to build them up. I've learned that. You're doing great, Brian. We're really sound, proud of you. You, you sound like my <laughs> wife. Come, like she's she's figured that out. <laughs> You've come a long way. Stroke that ego. Hey, watch this. You got it, bro. It felt good, man. I tell you, I thought, oh, the turkey's dead. And then it went, Whoop. Dude, your shot is looking awesome. For real. There it is. Ooh, great shot, dude. One more. I got you. Shoot, bro. Empty the quiver. Whew, getting tired. I, I really do like have a hard time getting all the way out. That's all right. uh, I noticed what I did on that one. I think what I did. Here I am. Like uh, I had the bow like this instead of like you, you can't can. more. So when you start out with that shot. And that's when it hits me. Here I'm thinking. Like, right. Yeah, you, maybe you, maybe you should quit doing push-ups, Brian. Yeah, I've seen you. He's I have a little chest. Match. He's right. up on the Yeti, bro. Okay. All right. A lot of things to keep track of on this. Yeah. Just focus on where you're aiming. That's the most important right now. Because everything else is looking solid. Oh, okay, dude. That you felt good. I just yeah, wasn't aiming. Great shot, out. dude. Yeah, dude. Your Ooh. shot's money. My pecs. Yeah, that's gonna lose a nipple. That one. It's. I. I need to. I shoot. I've noticed I'm shooting a lot better with the bow vertical mm -hmm. than I am yeah. canted. That's same reason I shoot. It's. It is more natural to stand upright like this and do this, or stand like this. It's. Dude, just stand up. If you're shooting a bow like this. You're losing out on all this draw length you have to offer. So it's standing up. Yeah, can, and then when I'm up here like back. this, I can feel it come through. When I'm like this, it's like a... You're limited here, right? Yeah. But you stand up and you can expand. You can open your chest and you can push that elbow back. It makes a huge difference. The, the shot's way, way different. Yep. 